Welcome to the MWG podcast. This is episode 49. And for the 49th episode, we have a huge uh, surprise and a special treat. Today, we're going to have our first three guest podcast. And we are featuring Foodie Corn, Cav Master, and Captain Merrill. Uh, yeah. Yep. Smashes from the uh, Sin Cal scene who recently attended Genesis this past weekend. So we're going to pick their brains and see just what it's like to attend uh, a super major or is it? Is it yeah, it was, a, it was a super, yeah, it was a super, yeah, super major. major. Yeah. Super duper major. Super Heck yeah. Duper major. And uh, how Sin Cal came out and represented because you guys went hard. Yes, sir. Facts, bro. Sore, I have a sore throat. I'm screaming. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I got, I got allergies, and my my voice is gone. Exactly. Still. Like, oh. Bro, my on, on like Sunday finals, I couldn't scream at all, but I was still doing the like motions with my hands yeah. as if I was screaming. <laughs> I was like, and just furiously punching the air, like, let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Boy, oh, Jesus. All right. Well, before we get into the recap of Genesis, we just want to do a quick introduction for the uh, listeners who haven't met Cav and Merrill. I mean, you guys are familiar with Foodie. Uh, but and let's start with, uh, I guess we'll start with Cav and just give us a quick intro, your name, gamer tag, uh, who you main in uh, Smash Bros, and just a quick gamer fact about you. Uh, all right, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Cav, or as some of the old heads in the community might have might have used to know me, uh, Cav Master. Um, I'm from Stockton, <laughs> from the Stockton scene. I've been around since basically the very beginning of the Space Bar days. Um, I'm kind of like I'm I'm Sen Cal's like most known cloud main. Uh, if you know, there's a couple others in like Fresno, but if if you think about cloud and Sen Cal, usually people like point to me. And um, best cloud. <laughs> my, uh, my my I guess I guess like a, a little fact is my tag is like probably the most boring tag you can ever think of. It's just my name but with two letters taken out. Uh and people always pronounced like Cavmaster wrong because it was supposed to be Cave Master, but everyone pronounced it wrong and they pronounced it Cav Master, but it caught on pretty quick, and so I just dropped the master part and everyone just called me Cav. All right. That's, that's a good <laughs> origin. <laughs> and now Captain Merrill, let's give let's get a quick introduction. Yo, what is going on, y'all? I am Meryl, a.k.a. Meryl Streep, a.k.a. Captain Meryl, a.k.a. Tony Tone, a.k.a. Canine with half the skill. I'm from Stockton, main DDD, the random button, whatever. I'm feeling like that week, honestly. Um, and I love my region. And um, I don't have any fun facts or anything. I don't really know right now. I'm like... First gaming system, yeah. Oh, first, oh, second Dreamcast. I got it in like Dream? 2001. Dream. Yeah, bro, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, bro. Yeah, I got oh, a second man. Dreamcast. Dreamcast is your first? Man, what? <laughs> that makes me feel, I said, if Dreamcast is your first, that makes me feel old. Yeah. Nah, yeah, I'm like 25, <laughs> dude. Freaking, I got second Dreamcast. My first game was either Sonic Adventure 2 or Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It was either one of those. I'm not too sure. Too but, good uh, yeah, very, very good choices, dude. Great games. But yeah. Right. There's me. Hey, hey Kav, you want to give us your first uh, gaming system? Just real quick. Um, it was actually the N64. Oh. It was like the 360 and the PS3 had like just come out. Mm -hmm. And, um, when my when my mom met my dad, or my my stepdad, um, they they bought me a console when I was like three years old. It was uh, it was an N sixty four, had Mario Party two, Mario Kart sixty four, and Ocarina of Time. And I was like, I you know I was like I was like three or four, but I started really using it. When I was like five or six, and then like from there I just upgraded to like all kinds of Nintendo stuff. And then I started delving into like Xbox and PlayStation and PC and all that. But the N64 holds like a very special place in my heart. Cause it was, it was the very beginning. Yes. Uh, it's a classic. Uh, sweet. I noticed no smash on that list. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't get into smash till I was like probably 12. Whoa. Oh, yes. All right. Well, <laughs> now that everybody's a little more familiar with you guys, we can start, uh, is heading into Genesis. Uh, so, uh, but, but before we do that, let's just give the listeners a quick intro on what Genesis is. 
and uh, I guess it is a super major, one of the oldest super majors. It's been running since, I don't know, probably 2008. But I know that the first one started in Brentwood, and then they moved around throughout the throughout the bay to Oakland, San Jose, different convention centers. And it's been huge just in uh, Smash's history. I don't know if it was the first... Hey, the first one was in Brentwood? It was in, around oh, that area. Antioch, yeah. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. No way. It was in Antioch. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that. That's um, I'm learning things. That's very interesting. Yeah, I don't know if it was called Genesis like at that point, but I, I know they moved around. They went from San Jose to Oakland and now they're back at San Jose for this year. Uh -huh. Um this was, I don't want to say this was the biggest Genesis, but it was definitely a huge Genesis. I want to say there was like 5,000 people like pre-reg or something like that. I think it was like 4.7, 4, 4.8 or something like that. Something, yeah. Know. But there was so many people there and it was basically the first tournament uh, coming out of COVID. Like the first ma super major tournament coming out of COVID. Uh -huh. and so that's why so many people were like, that. that's what makes it so great. That's what makes this Genesis so amazing. And I like, seeing so many YouTube videos and talking to so many people. I think that this Genesis like sparked a fire under everyone. Even if it's Leo winning the tournament, I think this still sparked a fire under everyone. Everyone wants to play again. Ultimate was kind of I, I don't know about anyone else, but Ultimate was kind of a uh, boring during during quarantine. Online isn't that fun. It gets gets a little repetitive. True. No, yeah, and like. And like there was like other majors and such like you know there was there was Riptide and there was Main Stage and there was Collision, yeah. but nothing to this scale because because Ultimate had like nineteen hundred people, yeah. and I'm pretty sure it was the biggest major back since COVID, um, and so like just those it was it wasn't only just like you know the U.S. coming out there were some Japanese players there was you know uh, a huge part of Genesis was was France which we can get into later um, yes. Like the French scene was huge, uh, you know. People all like from Mexico, you know. A lot of scenes started to like actually show up uh, for like their scenes, you know. Sun Cal being probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Yes. Oh, like, there, was, there was even um, for the melee people out there. There was even fifteen hundred for melee. Wow. And I don't know the last time there was a melee tournament with over a thousand people even. Like, like, well, not like this not like this this is crazy and you have almost i want to say every top player in attendance zane uh mango nun omsa hbox ibdw uh Kador, like kadoran like all these all these high level players mm. that normally wouldn't all be in attendance there's always like one missing sometimes you know yeah i think the yeah. only person like that was like top like tippity top that was missing was leffen yeah. True. I, someone, someone had told me that Leffen ended up making it. I think he was just spectating, though. I'm not sure. Oh, really? I have no yeah. idea. Someone came up to me and they were like, Leffen's here, Leffen's here, Leffen's here. Oh, <laughs> they were fangirling along. <laughs> um, so, 64 had 60 players, though. Never mind. We won't talk about 64. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I, mean, still it, play I mean, it was also like, it was pretty wild because. The size of the venue, there was just like, there was enough room for everyone. Like, the 64, you know, not as many people signed up. So they just had 64 setups near ult, but there was the entire side for ult. And then there was the entire side for melee. And I, I saw a tweet, I don't remember who tweeted it, but they were like, uh, for the first time in my life, there is open setups um, for, th there is no open setups for melee. All of the setups are taken up. Everyone is playing, and it like I remember walking with a uh, with weapon on the first day. It was it was early in the morning before pools. It was on the first day. It was like it was like nine 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 thirty. And he was like, "Yo, Cav, like just just come walk the venue with me." So we started walking, and we went to the melee area, and there was already people just in grinding. There was hundreds, like just so many people over on the melee side already. They were all grinding, and me and weapon were like, weapon looked at me, and he was like, "You know, it's kind of like crazy to see." This is like one of the most prospering scenes in like the in in like any esport because of how old the game is. It's kind of inspiring for the fact that there's there's still so many people playing the game. Yeah, most definitely, dude. It's yeah, and like 
to go back to what Foodie said, it definitely lit a fire under a lot of people. Just seeing everybody grinding, everybody, you know, trying their best, playing so well, like just performing and absorbing the the like culture of Smash. It, it, it was great. It was a great weekend. And I will say, I think the amount of upsets is uh, very inspiring. Oh, no, there was so many oh, upsets. Oh, man, my boy Zeke in though. Oh, my. <laughs> no, the SoCal the Slayer? Yes. yes, the SoCal Yo, Slayer. Ty ranks and Zenyu back to back. Hit him with the... Ooh. See, oh, yo, I think, boy. okay, in my opinion, I think the best part of him taking on Tyranks mm-hmm. was, I don't know if any, like, you guys have, you guys are definitely there, actually, because we saw oh, yeah. Fear, we saw Fear lose to Tyranks, and I swear we were all like, oh, well, like, good job, Fear, good job, Fear, like, we were all like, and then we saw, like, it's like Zeke and came in like a superhero, and like, yes. dude, I swear to God, there was, there was background music for him, too, he came in, and it was like, bah, and there was, like, he just came, and he sat down, him and Tyranks are playing, and he's, Nah, completely oh. like not just for fear but for all the same cow it was, was it, it, sorry uh it was yeah it was it was so wild just for the fact that like i remember fear got off the setup and we were talking to him and i turn around and i see yeah, Zeke sitting down, exactly and i just scream zekin's on zekin's on and sen cow just sprinted yeah. in the front of the setups and like it, it wasn't only zekin sets because it was so unfortunate mm-hmm. so i had i had to play leo at genesis Man. Uh, round two of pools yeah. and so i was sitting down playing leo but before that i was watching because the screen the screens on the main stage were huge they were ginormous so i could see them from across the venue and zenyu and zekin were playing and right before i'm about to play leo i sit down and uh my friend d's here behind me he goes oh my god zekin just took a game off zenyu and i'm like Ooh. what and then i didn't get to watch the rest of the set but I stand up and like Troubles has his hands on his head and D popping off. I'm like, what happened? They're like, Zeke can beat Zenyu, Zeke can beat Zenyu. And I went back and watched it on the on the Twitch VOD. And you can just see in the camera, all of Senkal is going ballistic. Like they're all popping off. And like it was such a big Senkal had such a big presence at Genesis and so many like pop-offs <laughs> that it, in the uh, there was a video, there was an introductory video for top eight on stream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, where like they they just had all the matchups that were happening for top eight round one, uh, in winners and losers, and not only that, but they had Senkal in that video. They had Zeke and Tyranks, like a like a short little clip of Zeke and Tyranks, like sitting down and pointing at the stages, and then they had Senkal popping off when Zeke beat Zenyu, and it was like that is some of the most recognition our scene has ever gotten. There's people on Twitter like, dude, Senkal are insane, like. I, I can't. I need to go to some of their locals. They're so like energetic. Cheering with Senkal was some of the most fun I've ever had. Like it was, it was wild. Bro, we we were really out there, man. Like like if 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 uh, people didn't know about our region before, which you know, like a lot of people don't. When I play with people online and they're like, "Hey, where are you from?" and I say, "Oh, I'm I'm from so and so," Senkal, they're like. You mean NorCal? No, I mean SenCal. Why? Why would I not? Why would I not say NorCal if I was from NorCal, Central California? Yeah. And I'm like Stockton, yeah. blah, 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 blah. They're like, never heard of them. Y'all heard of us now, man. We on top. We coming for you. Yes. We coming. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed on Twitter. It looks like uh, it looks like Zenyu may be considering a uh, a trip over here. A little yeah. SenCal invasion. Yeah, a little SenCal yeah. invasion. It's gonna be kind of crazy. So is he going we to civil all... war, or is he going just to uh, uh, something in Fresno? I, I would assume because yeah. um, back like three years ago, mm-hmm. uh, Fresno had a local called the Floor is Green, okay. and um, SoCal actually invaded that one. And Doodle Bob, the uh, the Wario from Fresno, actually won like one of the biggest the Floor is Green tournaments. Nice. Uh, shout out, shout out to the Fresno scene. They're all the homies. Like, True. But it's kind of off topic. I love the Fresno scene. Everyone there is so laid back. Um, but Doodle actually won the local over like a bunch of SoCal players. And the energy, like there's a I can't find the video, but there's a video out there mm-hmm. of the SenCal scene watching Doodle and uh Sheena, I think his name was, play. It was it was the PT from SoCal. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone just popping off when Doodle won. Like everyone was going crazy. And it's mm-hmm. like wow. we we've carried our support. From these small locals where sometimes we get invaded, like, you know, SenCal has, you know, sen- like in, in, in Stockton re- more recently, we've had NorCal come down like Louie Money. Um, 
and things like that. And when Spot beat Louis Money, um, you know, the venue got really loud. And then we've also had like friendly rivalries within Senkal, you know, when Zekin went on his huge CC run and beat Infamous, he beat uh, Keo, yeah. he beat Jimmy Chonga, he beat all these top players. It was like, you know, there's so many storylines that are being made within Senkal and it's like really inspiring to see mainly for the fact that it's like our scene is going from something that was so small and grassroots to something that can be so much bigger now. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And there's like an abundance of content coming out within the scene with Carnage's stream because he does uh, a lot of tournaments in like Merced and like other areas. There's Art Out stream. Spot streams a lot more now. Uh, Weapon stream. And, and just a whole... It has been a lot going on like post quarantine in uh, words. No, but um, yeah, there's, there's, there's just a lot of things going on that people can just watch and see what our scene is like. And it feels really good. Yes. So back to Genesis though, I heard you guys had a flash mob going on too. How, how'd that work sure. <laughs> so okay so i think the flash mob honestly literally started i don't know about you guys but i think it really started with uh fear versus that me gunner oh my so, god he's, he's, like correct me if i'm wrong That's That's so, yeah yeah like, so we so fear i kind of caught more like the end like the last half of it i didn't catch the first like beginning part but I, I think Cav or Mero might know, but from what I know, the me gunner had beat fear and then like popped off and it was like not even the end of the set. Damn. Right? Oh. It like popped off and so fear got mad and so he switches to Steve on the last game at least. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's like close to the end of the match and he's not hasn't even won yet and he's popping off he's going let's go oh let's go. yes oh man he's like, he's like yeah and he's like and he's like dropping f bombs and everything dude it was crazy <laughs> and like i think at that moment every second cow player in the entire venue just for some reason had this a sudden just let's all go see fear set and so we all go watch everyone's Bro. popping off and then right <laughs> after they have fear play tie ranks and so, of course, we just saw this crazy set. We just saw, like, Fear beat this me gunner. We're like, all right, we got to stay here and support him for the next dude, too. And it's Tyrinx. It's, it's, uh, Tyrinx is so cal, and I'm pretty sure he used to be sponsored, too. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I, I, I saw something about that on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um, but we all saw that. And then right after Fear versus Tyrinx, we had Zeke in versus Tyrinx, and right before that, we had Zeke in versus Zenyu on stream. So, like, it was just we had these like hype sets, and our players were doing so well, and our we're just so hyped for our play for Sir Senkal. I think it was just it was crazy, but I, I think the best one was Fear followed by Zeke in against Tyrinx because we literally were all popping off so hard. I saw a picture somewhere, there's like three or four cameras all on the opposite side of the table, uh, recording us, taking pictures and everything. Uh, and we're all like screaming, yelling off of every single hit. Like nothing's even happening and we're all screaming. <laughs> and I remember, I, I really, I distinctly remember looking over at Zay and I go, hey Zay, uh, look, TK's over there, TK's over there. Uh, watch, he's gonna, he's gonna like see how hype we are. He's gonna come over here, he's gonna see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, TK Breezy comes over, gets it in through the crowd, and he's like watching. He watched Fear versus Tyranks, and then he watched Zekin versus Tyranks, and he liked Zekin so much. Oh yeah, he, he, dude, he was big up. He was like, he was like, dude, because I remember during uh, Zekin Tyranks, um, mm -hmm. not only was it it was a TK, but Cagged, like yeah. the biggest TO in Ultimate, was there, mm -hmm. and he was watching, and like. So at first it was just Senkal watching and like some like outsiders. Yeah. And like some of SoCal. And then like we started to get so loud. It was Senkal, SoCal, like some top players. Fatality came over and like Fear, Fear beat this me gunner and Fatality came over and he like looks at me and he's like, did, did, was there like a huge upset? And I go, no, our, our local Steve main or one of our local Steve mains beat a me gunner and he just started losing his mind. <laughs> and like, 
everyone was watching and it got to a point where there was like unironically probably 200 to 300 people trying to watch this set people were just surrounding the entire area like trying to watch from across the tables Mm -hmm. because these tables were really long which is one monitor one monitor one monitor people were on the other end of the table trying to watch and like Mm -hmm. we were screaming we were so loud like it was insane we we were getting so hyped and i remember specifically if you've ever been to like a senkau local and our dog was there you've probably heard him like do like (laughs) like, voice crack pop off and it's really funny (laughs) he just kept doing it after every hit it was so funny and like i i I remember when tk came over i I looked i tapped on spot's shoulder i was like spot he was like what's up i was like look to our left he sees tk and he just starts crying laughing (laughs) um i posted a a a tweet in the podcast chat and it's just it's a picture of us all i actually just noticed in that picture hbox is actually watching us is he oh my god he's there in the hat Oh shoot! Oh my God, that's Hbox. That's actually Hbox. Oh my God, I didn't even notice that one. So wow, that's yeah. You can can see like you can see that like TK is crouching down. I'm pretty sure that's in a cat right next to him. Yeah, that is. That is. You can see Foodie there, Dre's there. Like I was in the front watching this the entire time, but so many people came through. It was getting so hot. I had to back up a little bit. I couldn't even see the set. I could see like a part of it, and I saw the kill screen for half a second, and we all just started popping off. If you couldn't tell, I think there there's that that second setup next to us. Honestly, I don't think anyone was able to even play on that setup. I think we had so many people crowded around. We were really on that. There, was, really there was a crowd watching the crowd. That's how hyped we were. That's how you put we're Saint really on the map. You got exactly. everybody looking. Exactly. I will say, in a five thousand person venue, I think we were the loudest. No, yeah, I think I think days one and two we were definitely the loudest, (laughs) but I think when it came to day three, France was unmatched. Oh my god, France was insane. In the top eight venue, or sorry, go ahead, Foodie. No, 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 keep going, keep going. I I was just gonna say, in the top eight venue, whenever Gluto was on, there there was the there was the high rafters, and they were watching up there, (laughs) and like Senkau was chilling on the bottom, and we were just watching. And every time Gluto was on, they would do like a chant in French. But every time, every single time without fail, Gluto had waft, they would just chant waft, 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 waft <laughs> over and over again. No. And there was a point where they were chanting it. And I'm pretty sure like, you know, because the players are wearing like AirPods or headphones on stage. They're pretty loud. But the right. crowd was so loud. I think you could hear them through it because they're just chanting waft and Gluto just randomly threw it out. <laughs> Like, just for fun. And then he still won the game, and we were like, what is happening? (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, I I wish I could have been there for that. Dude, too. Um, I was just going to say, from what I had heard, I got to find the tweet. But basically, uh, I guess France was basically, like, chilling behind. Because, like, they had all the stream setups or whatever behind the black curtain. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they had, I guess... Yeah, yeah. French yeah. Giant, yeah, there, yeah, the there button. was like behind the uh, behind the because there was a main stream which was the big stage, and then there was like yeah. a smaller stage to the left which was the secondary stream for Ult. Mm-hmm. And behind that secondary stage, they were running the stream, of course, but they had a setup back there that was the front, like the the French crowd made they made their own setup in the back, and they were running a stream on it. And yeah. so there, there's like a bunch of like French players playing against some of like America's top players, uh-huh. like what? um. I think his name's Modzai. He's like French's best Pac-Man, or he's like Europe's best Pac-Man. He had to play against Aaron, and that was on stream back there. And I didn't even know about that stream until today. Like I found, no, yeah, out, I found out about that today, and I was like, "That's insane." I watched Coney's stream, and he was talking about it, and I was like, "Yo, they, they, they really just took you to a whole new world." Yeah, it was like because I kept seeing, focus, so. I kept seeing people go back there, and then I just wouldn't see them like come back out. I was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> yeah, right, I like, like I saw calling it the French dimension. The French dimension, right, dude? <laughs> I saw the curtain. Like I think it was near the security checkpoint thing, right? And somewhere around that area, I think I'm not sure. But I was like, what is that black curtain? What is back there? And now I know what's back there. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was crazy. But they would like, if there was, they had, to, like, they had a bracket set like outside of the black curtain, like where all the normal setups were. Mm-hmm. I remember we were cheering for someone set. And I remember turning around and seeing France cheering. And they're, they're like waving their flag or whatever, cheering for some yeah. other set. 
I'm all, what is going on? And they're all, they all had some weird, they, like, like crazy chant. I don't know what it was, but it sounded so cool. I, I wish we had some kind of Senkal chant like that. They had a couple of chants. Yeah, I remember yeah. during, uh, I remember during, um, Zeke and Tyrex, uh, the off stream set. I remember, um, there was a, uh, you know, people were starting to get pretty loud. And Senkal was trying to cheer on for Zekin. Mm -hmm. um, so at a point, um, we, you know, we were just like, well, screaming Zekin isn't, isn't working. Yeah. You know, it was working a little bit, but we wanted to get creative with it. So we just started chanting Senkal over and over. And it, it, you could hear us across the, the venue. Like it was so loud because Everybody's the venue was played. not, the venue was huge. The venue was really big. And so if you were on the melee side, I, I, do not doubt whatsoever you could have heard us you could have heard us like on the melee side that's how loud we were huh. literally bro it was crazy man we are uh, I, I think I, the I, best i think the best part of our crowd was um it kind of sucked because he did lose but spot the mvd oh we were all there watching that and uh wait, we, wait. but they had like they had like two or three scenes behind us they had the vegas scene they had mvd scene dude they had a whole bunch of people behind us that were from like different scenes mm -hmm. against Senkal. And there they start chanting MVD, MVD. And then Carnival's all, oh heck no. And then we start chanting Senkal, Senkal. We got so loud, we drowned all of them out. Nice. We were the only thing that you can hear for a solid like <laughs> hour or so. <laughs> I don't know. At, like, we, man. <sighs> Man, <laughs> I remember. Uh, I remember specifically during Jimmy Chonga versus Legit. Mm -hmm. uh, it happened during so the two probably like heartbreaker sets for Senkal during Genesis um, mm -hmm. on stream were Jimmy Chonga versus Legit and Blaine versus Ven. Oh, um, Blaine! No. So Jimmy, Boy. both of those sets ended like so bad because. So game two of Jimmy Chonga legit, Jimmy was down 1-0 and he, he brings he like clutches it off and we're like, dude, he can do it. And then he just he started panicking so much. Game he was so nervous game three, he just wasn't throwing out like obvious options. And then Dre and then um not Dre. Um Ven versus Blaine. Uh Blaine went Fox game one and kind of got like ran over a little bit. And then he he went banjo, who's like, you know, his signature. Uh besides Bowser, he has banjo. And his banjo is insane. So he goes, he goes banjo. And he takes a game off Ven, it, and game three is last hit, last stock, and Ven re-grabs ledge. <clears throat> he re-grabs oh. the ledge, um, and all Blaine has to do is side B, because side B on Banjo catches at ledge. But instead, he tries to get greedy and goes for a down smash. And as soon as he does that, mm -hmm. Ven's up, he hits him and sends him across the stage, and all of Senkal was just like, oh my god, he threw! Bro, and then, bro. And then he, gets, he gets Ven across stage again, but Ven just uh, forward airs him with Zelda, mm -hmm. and he just del gets deleted and loses, and we were like, dude, he just had to side B! <laughs> That's literally all he had to do, bro. I was in the shower watching that stream, bro. <laughs> I saw the the, uh, the um, tweet, and I was like, ah, shit, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not at the venue yet. I gotta watch this. Heartbreaker. I was screaming. I was so mad. I was like, Blaine! All you had to do was follow the damn side beat, but you ain't do it. Bro, I was like, man, I felt that. Like, I felt that pain emanating from the venue over to the Airbnb that I was staying at. And it hit me because I was like, man, I cannot imagine how it feels to be him right now. Because he was playing so clean, bro. Yeah. Like, the banjo was the answer. Good disjoints, good projectile camping, multiple projectiles, so freaking Zelda can't just, you know, neutral be all of them at once. Man. Like, he was in there. He was he was finding his groove. Like, he had the download. He was ready. He just... Damn! Infamous versus uh, Mika was also a heartbreaker of a set. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> um, what happened with that one? So, Mika is, I'm pretty sure Europe's, like, number two Wario behind uh, Gluto. Oh, okay. And so, they go game three. It's insanely close. They're both at two stocks apiece, and Infamous is up. He interacted with something with Mika off stage, and it clanks, and they both just die because they they didn't have enough time to recover. So all of like most of Senkal, some someone, a couple people in Senkal were like, "Yeah, let's go Infamous. That's a good trade." 
but me and Keo were also watching, mm-hmm. and we were both like, "This is awful," because Keo is like Senkao, one of Senkao's best Wario mains, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and he knew because Mika still had waft. Right. They were at zero zero both on last stock. Infamous was trying to play neutral, but he got hit with like two nairs and an up air and just died. He got nairo like across the stage. He just he just yeah. died at like thirty five or forty, and we were all it was because that was in losers. Right. So loser gets knocked out of the tournament, and we were like, "Oh, that was so close." We were like, "He had him," and then he just he just got hit by it. Like it, it's so hard too because there's like y- you cannot interact, but at the same time, if you just get caught, you're gonna die. And he just got yeah. caught, and that's all it took, and he lost because of it. And we were we were all so sad for. Him. It was really terrible, but bad man got caught lacking, man. That, uh, I dropped my so fast when when that like, when tit came out. I was like, "You had it." And it was really oh, sad. Another person. another heartbreaker was uh, I don't know, I don't think enough people saw this. I know me and Enrique saw it. Infamous, yeah. Uh, it was uh, troubles versus his very last opponent in losers. Oh, Teb, Teb, yeah. Oh. Oh. Um, dude, yeah. trouble me. Tell, it, was, it hurt because his opponent that he lost to in winners was Dark Wizzy, right. and so to fight another Mario in losers was just like, oh come on, like, yes, it, Mar- oh no, it was just basically like almost like Mario back to back. Yeah, and uh, Tev didn't like destroy him, but it, it just he had a hard time. And troubles like like downloaded him, I think, like too late. Mm-hmm. And at that point, Teb was just too far in advantage. Yeah. Um, That's interesting because Wizzy plays Mario different than everybody else. So you got to yeah. He is he is so great. that's actually so. Troubles literally said he was like, "It sucks because it was another Mario." But what was even worse was that he played entirely different. It was like fighting a whole different person. Yeah, oh. and and he was like, because I remember I was talking to him and I was like, how how did it go against Wizzy? Because I only saw like the first half of it. Mm-hmm. Oh. But um, so like the first half in the very last talk, um, and he was just like, it was hard, solely for the fact that like. Wizzy doesn't hit buttons. And like when you play against Mario, you're expecting Mario to be hitting a lot of buttons, but Wizzy was just like with punishing the entire time. Like he wasn't, you know, a lot of a lot of people will just like the, the, the neutral term for it is mashing, which like a, a lot of people inherently think is a bad thing, but it's it's kind of not, especially in this game's meta. Um, but like he was like Wizzy Wizzy doesn't mash, he just played neutral like the entire time, and I just I didn't know how to deal with it. And then I was like, Oh, you got it against Teb, and then when he lost, yeah, just like Foodie said, he was like, it it was literally just a completely different playstyle. Like I went into it thinking I was playing another Wizzy, but I, I needed to go into it like I was playing another Mario. Right. How was Teb playing? Like he was playing hot. He was playing pretty good. Because he also Mario. beat Infamous. He beat Infamous the night before. Oh, he beat Infamous? Yeah, he, he sent Infamous into losers. Damn! Yeah, he sent him into Tim. losers based off of off of basically an SD. Yeah, we do need to come after Tim. Now that you say, now that you mention it. Oh, so it was off an of SD. That basically, uh, Infamous said that like I, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said something along the lines of like he got knocked off stage and then inputted something, but it didn't come out. Mm-hmm. So when he tried to recover, it was just too late. Damn. Yeah, if you hear this, all of Sun Call is coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Teb's a NorCal Mario, right? Uh, he's from SoCal now, actually. He moved to SoCal. I guess, yeah. I've heard that he, he's there for, like, school or something. Yeah. He might, might come he's, got, he's going to uh, UCI. And goes mm-hmm. to the same lo- that uh, goes to the same locals that Eganize does. Okay. Crazy. Yeah, something. We might have to visit SoCal soon. <laughs> we got Zenu. Yeah. Oh, no, literally. We got, we got to raid him. Actually, <laughs> we, we have to destroy them. Yeah. <laughs> Sun I Cal's mean, not I'm not, not but like y'all can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know about that. Well, well, how'd you guys do at the tournament? How were your sets? Um, who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, I can. Um, so I had. So it was my pool was really weird. Mm-hmm. Um, so my round one was a guy named Haram, uh, or like Haram or something. Um, <laughs> and the only sets and like videos I could find on it uh, were his K rule. So I'm historically terrible against K Rule. I think the matchup is like surprisingly even for Cloud, because I think K Rule can abuse Cloud really hard in disadvantage. Yeah. 
So I was, I, I'm terrible against that character. So for like two weeks leading up to Genesis, um, as soon as pools got, re- well, pools got released like a, a week, uh, before Genesis, um, I, like that, that whole week before Genesis, I was just practicing against K roll. And I was, I was getting ready for K roll. I was playing against some Byleth a little bit because Leo was my round too. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to make it competitive. Um, mm-hmm. so we get to Genesis and my, uh, you know, my round one's there. And I was like, all right. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do good. I, I understand the K roll matchup now. So I lock Cloud and I look down at my phone and I put my earbuds in and I start my music. When I look back up, he's on Bowser and I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> and Bowser Cloud is like surprisingly really hard for Cloud because Bowser's kind of like ba- Bowser's low key like a sortie and he's he's a very heavy one at that and he's fairly quick for his size. So it, it can be pretty hard for Cloud to deal with him at times. Um, but I, you know, I, I was like, all right, whatever. I'm just going to play slow. And I ended up winning the set. Nice. I was like, all right, cool. So then I had to play Leo and I was like, all right, I know he has a Corrin. He's been playing Corrin. Please give me the Byleth. Right. Please give me Byleth. So wait, Corrin's not even a mid tier. Like what's, what, what's so scary about that? <laughs> I don't know how to fight Corrin like at all. <laughs> it's such a, it's probably one of my least known matchups. All right. Um, oh. and I was like, just give me Byleth. And I lock Cloud, and he sits there for a second, mm-hmm. and he goes Corrin. And I was like, oh my god. Okay, whatever. I took a stock each game. I made it, I made it fairly competitive. Um, okay. I was like, whatever. And then I lose to him. So my pool had like a fair amount of DQs. Um, it had five DQs in total. Four of them were on my side of bracket. Yo. So I was projected to play... Um, Apparently, like a Terry player, he DQ'd. And then I was projected to play a Palu player from like Jamaica, he DQ'd. <laughs> so I was in losers' finals with my pool, and I was like, okay, cool, I'll take it, right? Yeah. I was like, I just need to win one set. It's still a set that I have to win. Right. So I'm going I'm to treat it just as serious. So I, I don't think I actually told uh, Meryl or Foodie about this, but I did tell some other people. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for uh, my match to be called after I lost to Leia. And um, I don't think they realized I was sitting there. So my pool captain and all the guys in my pool, uh, most of them, at least, were sitting there and they were talking about the bracket because it's it, the way that it worked is it was done on on paper brackets, and then the rest of it it was uploaded to Smash GG uh, later on. Hmm. So the the pool captain and some of the other guys in my pool they were talking, and they they bring they start talking about me, and you know I hear my tag, so I start eavesdropping a little bit, and they just start talking so much smack. <laughs> They're like, dang, this dude really beat his round one and then lost to Leo, and he's gonna make it out of pools for free. And like, they were like, dang, he hella deserves it. Like, he he did so much to get out of it. And then like, they um they they try to start like clowning on me like subconsciously. Right. Like the the pool captain turns to me and he's like, hey, so like, um, you know what what we can do is on the paper bracket, like we could put an asterisk next to the two O if it was close against you and Leo. So like, was it close? And I was like. I was, like, bro, I was like, bro, what are you trying to do? I was like, I was like, you know, I was like, bro, you're being a weirdo. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah, lol. It was, it was a, cl- right. And then this uh, apparently, when I was playing Leo, I lost, and uh, the game was like two, two and a half minutes, game one. Mm-hmm. And this inkling, I thought, I thought I heard it, but I didn't know if it was directed at me, but apparently it was. Mm-hmm. Um, this inkling player named Chibi in my bracket, um, he goes, dang. So how fast was that first game? Dang. And then immediately after he has to play Leo to get out of pools, right. he did fifteen percent the first game. Oh no, that's all. That's all he got. No that's stocks. All. All? That's all. No, fifteen percent. I'm pretty sure he got six stocked. So I was just sitting there and I was like laughing to myself, like, "Bro, how are you gonna talk and then like do worse than me?" Well, you can but, uh, say you took games I got, off of MK or stocks off of MK Leo. That's yeah, cool. but uh, I got I got to uh, I got to losers finals and it was a fox, so I was like I was kind of nervous, pretty bad against fox, but um. I, I three stocked his fox in like a minute and a half, and then he went Joker and beat that. And I made it out of pools. And then I had another two DQs out of pools. <laughs> and so my pool captain in round two was like, "Yo, just chill. For- we'll call you later." Yeah. And then I come back to my pool to check like forty five minutes later, and he's like, "Yo, we need you to play right now. We undQ'd one of your opponents. He just checked in late." And I was like, "Okay, whatever." So I go to play him. We go to game three. The setup like messes up, and the adapter on it breaks. It doesn't work anymore. So we have to no. wait like 10 minutes to go to a new setup. I win. And then I'm kind of sad I lost this. I lost to a Robin. Both games were like insanely close. But um, I lost to this Robin. And if I had won, I would have gotten to play like my favorite player, who's Aaron. 
Um, but I, I just barely lost and I was like, all right, whatever it happens. Um, but yeah, I, I had a, I had a pretty successful run. I feel like, uh, if, if I just clean some things up, I can, I can do a lot better. I did some money matches on uh, the last day of the venue being open. I, uh, I almost beat the buzz in a money match. So that was cool. <laughs> nice. Um, but I, I money matched, uh, I got bored and I asked troubles if he wanted money match and he three owed me. And then I asked Meister if he wanted a money match and he three owed me. And then I asked the buzz if he wanted a money match and he was like, how much? I was like, Oh, I'm only doing. He's like, I'm doing a best of three if if it's five, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then we went in game three, and he went min min, and I was like, okay, you're a cheeser, and I don't like you. And then uh, I lost, but you know, it was it was it was it was fun overall uh, in terms of like results. I got like 193rd or something like that. That's not bad. Yo, the best cloud in San Cal, telling y'all. Okay. Very fair, brother. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure MK Leo was ready for a cloud though. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was, I was like, I was like, out of all characters that I play. <laughs> yeah, so foodie, man, you guys want to share how you guys, how your experience was? Oh shoot! Oh uh, yeah, uh, I love Genesis. <laughs> uh, I I love Genesis. Um, my run was, it was pretty good. It, it was a lot better than my. It was a lot better than Gen Seven because that was my first one. I went zero two. Uh, and in my first Genesis, fun fact, I was playing against a Palutena. I want to say from Kansas, but I'm not sure. Like, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I'll have to, like, jump back and see. But um, uh, he played Palutena. And, like, I don't mind the Palutena matchup as DDD because it's not, like, I don't think it's as terrible as people say. I just peep, I like, I just think people jump too much and they don't play, like, super grounded. But, like, yeah, I, I miss inputted. Uh, an up smash as a jump like game two hella close and he up smashed me and I lost so this year I I was like yo you are decent at the game like you know you get in your own head too much like I'm I feel like I'm known like in in San Cal as being like a very passionate but like I am really emotionally charged so like I I beat myself up hella bad. Um like and um when I came to G eight, I was like, yo, you're gonna do fine. You know, these, you know, whoever's in your path, just play them as if, you know, they're a they're a top player. You know, play neutral, do good, don't fall into your habits, play patient. And like um I was grinding the entire weekend. Um my round one, who's my round one? Oh, it was this Falcon, uh, Shadarez, Shadarez from Reno. Um, homie's kind of cracked. I'm, I'm not going to lie. He plays the DD matchup really well. Uh, game one cooked me three stock. I think it was on town. Uh, yeah. Yes. He, he like three stocked me on town and I was like, damn, all right. It's Falcon. Falcon has a lot of burst options. If I give Falcon room, he's going to be really ambiguous with his movement, so I need to take him to a smaller stage. Uh, so I take him to Small Battlefield. You know, Small Battlefield and Smashville are my best stages as D3 because, like, I feel like I play a little differently from a lot of D3s because I'm very, like, neutral-based and use, like, side B as more of a wall and, like, a, like I like shields under it and be like all right you either have to grab me and take this hit or you have to jump around it or like basically you have to commit to something so on like small battlefield with falcon if he has something in his way he he kind of has you know like chill out a little more or he can't be as mashy because like i have more range and if you know I'm, I'm spacing it right doing everything i gotta do you know it's it's easier than i feel like people say it is but you know me i be choking <laughs> So I had a like a three stock lead. Um, I SD my my second stock right, and I'm like, all right, cool, that's fine. I don't care. Like, uh, I'm I can still do this. I'm a big boy, heavy. I'm not gonna die super early. It's fine. This man starts pulling out. This dude starts doing strings. This man <laughs> starts doing combos, hitting me mm-hmm. like near one, near 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 one, freaking up air, up air platform drop through up air into knee and i'm like god dang this dude just took my second stock i just got here right. man and and then he you know he he brings it all all the way back uh sends me in the losers 
Uh, my round, my losers round one was supposed to be Arch uh, Palutena from I want to say Tri State, but I'm not really sure. Uh, they DQ'd, so I moved on to fight my round what? My losers round uh, two mm -hmm. was Porque, and I forget who he played. Uh, he played who did Porque play? I think it was. Dang, I don't remember. Um, but I two one Porque and. My next set, I had to play uh, this dude named Lumen, who is a Byleth slash Joker. I'm super comfortable in the Byleth matchup. Like, um, I, I'm aware of the like Nair, m like fast fall mix ups and timings on on Shield and stuff. So, I'm like, all right, well, that's the main like kind of combo tool. I just have to keep away from this. Watch out for this so and so. I take him to Smashville game one. I think. Um, and he beats me like pretty convincingly, and I don't remember what my counter pick was, but I beat him game game two, and it was like like it was like it was bad. So he switched to Joker, and I love the Joker matchup. Mm -hmm. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Like I love fight. I love fighting Joker as D three because it's just like damn. Yeah, you're small and fast, but I'm gonna live forever, and and if you then. <laughs> You know, Arsene, I'm not afraid of Arsene because I'm like, you know, I could just, I'm going to just be over here. I'm going to just be off stage with my five jumps and my big hit boxes and my awesome ledge camping abilities. And I'm just going to wait this out. I'm going to get a couple hits on you to like make your thing go down faster. And then I'm going to just camp. So have fun with that. Right. Um, he, his, his Joker, I could tell he hadn't played that matchup as Joker because that man was lost. High key, I felt bad a little bit because I was doing some some stuff I should not have been getting away with. <laughs> I was kind of styling on him like on the lowest of keys because I was like, "Dang, I could sense the fear in your heart, and that is a mistake." Mm -hmm. I'm about to run through you. Um, yeah, but like, uh, I I beat him, um, and then I have to fight Shadiras or Sh Shadaras again. Um, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, all right, you know what went wrong last game? You know, don't jump from ledge because, you know, near one and the up tilt is a thing and all this other stuff. And all these notes I have, and I'm just like, it did not matter. That man cooked me. Oh, no, he's ready, huh? That man, that, that man cooked me game one. I was like, my guy, damn, Jesus, you adapt fast. So I went Pichu game two. Pichu is like... I, uh, I feel like it's kind of like not a running joke, but like <laughs> yes and no that like I, I play a lot of characters um, like and one of those characters being Pichu and people are always like, why don't you play Pikachu? Because Pikachu is not Pichu and Pikachu is not as cute. He, you know what I mean? And Pikachu's and Pichu's freaking fun. Pichu, you know, I think a lot of people dropped him after um after the nerfs and stuff, but I still find him fun. And he's really good against Falcon and like Spacey's. So I keep him in the pocket. Uh, so I bring out the Pichu. I start cooking this man. Bam, bam, bam. Freaking. Uh, but Pichu dies early. So you know how that goes, right? But um, that was my bracket one run. I went 3 2. I, I got like 513th, which I was like pretty proud of because I'm like, yo, you did better than last year. You went positive one dq which is fine but this is like a major like these are really good players this isn't just like fen cows like you know pr or like whoever it's like these are like out of state like and you're basically showing that you can compete with these people and you doubt yourself like way too much and i had fun it was great i lost all of my money matches uh i i played two two pokemon trainers from socal mm -hmm. And um, I played my homie Lin, who is a Kazuya Min Min. I hate Min Min. I think if you play that character, you don't like fun and you're a bad person and you like to see people suffer. Uh, but that was 3 2. I pulled out the Palu. I brought it back almost reverse 3 0. But then I got Kazuya. Oh. So, but, but yeah, Godfist cheats, but that character is cracked. If you put in the work to master Godfist, you might as well get what, perfect fame advantage. Or Guaranteed follow-ups, whatever it is. True, but these Kazuya players got to master how to get the inputs to talk to some women. <laughs> Drop this character. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he's fired. He's fired. Oh, man. So, Foodie, how was your run? How'd you do? Uh, my run was pretty good. I went into my first opponent pretty blind. Um, because honestly, I forgot that the PG stats website existed. But uh, I was looking him on YouTube. I looked him up like everywhere I possibly like could think of at the time, and uh, I couldn't find anything on him. His tag was Seraphile. He was a Mario main, and I'm not exactly the most confident against Mario, um, especially because of the online era. Every time I found a Mario online, it's just bad. Yeah. Uh, but I, I won by like my skin and teeth. I would like I would say like on the last game I would say like he won like five times before I ended up closing it out. Um, I won two one, and I played Sheik the entire time on that one. Nice. Um, I I, I would have switched to Pichu. However, I think I've learned my lesson against Mario as she as Pichu because Pichu is just too light for one. And so, like, a lot of, like, the random stuff he throws out, like, random up smashes, I'm more likely to die as Pichu. Um, And then I also, uh, I I just, I I like the patience with uh, Sheik. With Sheik, I feel like I can, I have the ability to be more patient, camp them out. With Pichu, I don't have that ability. I hurt myself. Um, But then my second set was Pink Fresh. For those of you who don't know Pink Fresh, he's a... I know it's a men yeah uh, fun, fun fact him and troubles are actually like decent friends I've, yeah I, I, that's what i i've gathered <laughs> kind of it's kind of painful because like his min is really good and like i think i did okay with chic but i switched to pichu in game two because i just figured well i'm gonna lose and i just wanted to see how pichu could do mm-hmm. and i i was right going into the set and i should have just stayed chic the entire time i could have had a better chance um, but I lost that one 2-0. Uh, gone, went to losers, and I fought someone named uh, Fran999. Um, he was a Terry player. Yeah, I played P- uh, Sheik in game one, and I'm pretty sure I lost that one. And then in game two, I switched to Pichu, because I was like, he's not going to know. He doesn't know the Pichu matchup. And uh, sure enough, I was right. He had no idea about the Pichu matchup. I literally hit him with so many thunders. It was ridiculous. Like, if you're going to Genesis, you should know, like, the cloud on thunder spikes. That's, that's what it does. That's, that's how the move works. Just, just, if anyone knows, if you don't know about Pikachu Pichu, don't run into the cloud on thunder. That is what makes the move so good. Don't run into it. Do not jump um, on the Pichu. You will get thundered. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of like wiped the floor with him. I won't even lie. I think Troubles was behind me and even like dapped me up after I beat him because it was kind of like I kind of I kind of mopped him up. And then my next set was pretty easy. It was a uh, Pac Man. Uh, I I just played uh, Sheik the entire time. Um, pretty 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 easy. I almost switched to Pichu in game two just to style on him, but I, I didn't want to risk it because Genesis. So I just stayed Sheik. Got the duo. Yeah. Um, Work. And then I moved on to fight Conch in uh, Losers Finals of or Losers Quarterfinals or whatever my bracket to go into round two pools. And I ended up losing. He was a really good Byleth. Best, best Byleth I've ever fought. Um, definitely made me want to like rethink the matchup and everything and like how to fight him. Uh, I second guessed myself and I switched to Pichu in game two and I realized this genesis that like my biggest issue is switching mid set i would say like the against the terry i kind of like realized like it was a good idea to switch to pichu but i mean i think i have a problem uh, i want to i want to play so many character or both characters so bad i need to just stick to one in the set especially if, like if i lose but it's still kind of close i should stay chic and so after this genesis uh I decided my Sheik is better. Sheik is my Sheik is my main. So is my boy, <laughs> leaving the Pichu bros. I'm side. not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm gonna keep playing Pichu just because he's still good. But I'm gonna start practicing Pika because I gotta evolve, I gotta evolve sometime. We lost another one. This man with the puns. Get out of here, bro. Uh, all right, <laughs> awesome, it's man. Ask the podcast. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's just he's Pika's just better. I can't like there's so many matchups where like I just have so much trouble with Pichu because I don't have the range to touch my opponent. And Sheik literally is the reason I have to do that. I, I love Sheik and so I'm gonna continue to play Sheik, but I think Pikachu would just I think I think he might be the move. It's a broken combo, bro. I I, wish you all the I just I just realized I realized like with Sheik. So like my whole problem with Pika is Pichu stronger. Why play Pika? But Pika has like combos out of every single move he does, mm-hmm. and it's kind of it's kind of like Sheik, except you have you have Pichu stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so I can do Sheik combos and Pichu kill setups. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. Man's hitting buttons. This man mashing, doing strings. For now, but for now, my Sheik is better. I have, I think I've I've discovered a nice groove with Sheik, and um, I feel like, I feel like there's characters in this game that haven't been taken to their ceiling yet. Hmm. Sheik, Sheik is one of them. So, and Lucas. Oh, and Lucas, huh? So if you guys oh, had yeah. the yeah, chance. Yeah, I if you guys had the chance to train with anybody who maybe attended Genesis and, you know, maybe to reach that next level with your character, which top player would you pick? Um, like, you know. Did they have to only attend Genesis uh, or anyone. can it be like that anybody. player? Yeah. Who is the dream anybody? training partner to level you up for the next super major? Um, dang. A few years ago, I would have said anti, obviously, but then right now, um, I want to say Nakat and Nairo, honestly. Oh. Those those two. Um, I love their aggre- I love Nairo's aggressive play style, and I love Nakat's ability to like mix it up and just really play neutral. Because I got the chance to money match him. Oh, I lost a money match to Nakat. I completely forgot because it was so goddamn fast. <laughs> <laughs> He played Sora against me. I like that matchup with D3. I don't think it's terribly awful, but it's like he touches you once and you die. But it's also, I don't know how to SDI and get out of those combos. So I'm going to laugh at that. But yeah, the cat and Nairo um, off the top of my head. Huh. I would say, uh, I would say Void. I feel like that's an easy one for me. Just because he knows my characters, and I feel like Void picks apart gameplay really well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of his, uh, a lot of his yeah. gameplay, like in sets, he adapts very well, and I, I feel like he could help me like pick apart my gameplay and the things I do wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, honestly, I probably wouldn't say Spargo. I love Spargo as a player, but like, I feel like I'd honestly probably either say Aaron or Goblin. Oh, okay. Mainly for the fact that I, the way that I play the game, I love controlled aggression, and I also like uh, I I like controlled aggression and those bursts of just brilliance, like within neutral. And I feel like both of those players are like extremely good at you know doing what their characters do, and I also just I love their energy as people and like just as 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 players i feel like they they bring a lot of good energy and a lot of like good vibes and i feel like if i were to like hard grind for a super major i would need that kind of energy i have i have another top player that i'd like to choose no it's not allowed (laughs) it's uh no no who is it spot Spa, oh, I'm a huge spot spa fan. Spa. Ginormous spa yeah, fan, exactly. actually. I'm a huge spot fan. Yeah. Shout out to Spa. Dude, dude I never, crazy. I swear to God, I never thought I'd cheer for a Steve ever in my life. 60 <laughs> fan of Genesis. That guy's insane. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, good. Right there. Oh, so good. Just top eight. That's, that's great. So spot and Senkal on the map. Spot and Zekin. Spot and Zekin. True. And Infamous, we cannot forget about the king. Cannot forget I, about it. I just felt like Spot and Zekin just had such like memorable, like crazy things happen. But yeah, even Enrique, Fear, mm-hmm. uh, I, everyone, everyone did so well. Like I don't, not a single Senkal player went zero to. That's that's what's most impressive to me about yeah. that. As a whole region, yeah. everybody was getting out of pools. Yeah, that's super dope. Or if they're not, if not getting out of pools, almost there, almost there. Uh, 
a lot of people made it to like their final round before round two, including me. I was so ready. I was like, yo, I just need one more. Just one more, bro. And you're in round two? Yeah. Round two, though? Bro, <laughs> I'm bro hit him with the hammer, that. man. Pull out the bop, bop, bop. Get him to round two? So I, I, got like I did two. slightly better than my last Genesis run. Mm -hmm. I went three and two this time. Last time I went two and two. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, I, I was... I think I was more angry this time because I made it to the very last time I made it to the round before mm -hmm. this time I made it to the very last round of the pool. And I was like, man, I could have made it. I was right there. Wait, wait, three, two doesn't get out of me. the pool. Nah, nah, nah I was, uh, I was in losers. Um, like the last set. Oh my bad guys. I thought conch, conch, toss yeah, me on Conscious, a mean person. <laughs> well, I mean, it's always the next super major. I mean, everything seems to be coming back now. COVID no, yeah, we're on its way out. Uh, double down, y'all. We gotta go. Yeah, Sencal, I think Sencal's invading double down. I think that's our next. Especially yeah, because Vegas was out. cheering against us. Vegas yeah. was cheering against us while MVD was playing, and so I oh, think we God. need to invade Vegas. We have to beat MVD yeah. and all of Vegas. Yes. Yeah, yeah. With our Scrimbolo Bimbolo character pool, <laughs> <laughs> we play everybody. In fact, <laughs> I, I would just like to point out: I'm looking at PG stats, and now after this tournament, it would seem as though Pichu versus Mario is my most played uh, matchup, and I'm four and three over Mario. Hmm. Okay, look I'm at also you. six and zero oh over DDD, so I have a hundred percent win percentage against DDD. <laughs> Not my DVD. <laughs> Capper. Capper. Yeah. Oh. I know it's crazy. We gotta have more tournaments input um characters, more locals. Yeah. Most definitely. I think I think <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta do that fully charged. We'll have little papers and we'll have people write down what they what they played. Yeah, that actually might work better. Because... Little little post-its at the setup. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be nice. They got a um I got to make it out to a fully charged again, but I work on like Mondays, which sucks because I really like that tournament series because it's so close and it's like cool vibes and stuff and there's nice food. Yeah. And I feel like I do like really d decently there or like well on like rare, rare occasions. As I always do well, but it is on a Monday. That's the, that's the only bad part. Turbulence, the sadness, like move, move the day so we can all go over there. Yeah, I'm yep. Yes, sir, because I miss you, my man. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's always Central Coliseum. Uh, the next one is in okay. May, right? Yeah, May 7th. Yeah, May... May 7th. Hold on, let me check, actually. In the Discord. Oh, I was just on Discord. Man. I there's, on a, Discord. There's, there's a couple big tournaments in Sun Colin, man. Yeah, so uh, Central Coliseum's coming up. Uh, yeah, May 7th. Yeah, Civil Wars, end of May. Yeah. Uh, there's always the MNC weeklies, but I don't know mm. all the tournaments going on right now. Yeah, I can actually, in the in the Sun Cal Discord, we have a whole little event stuff. Very useful. Um, we got, uh, yeah, The Den at UC Merced on Friday, April 22nd at 6 p.m. All right. Uh, Smash and Pass 4 on Saturday, April 23rd. That one's going to be, sorry, it's loading, at uh, in Hanford. Okay. Um, then we have the A1 Grand Prix in Fresno. Uh, there's a weekly that's in Bakersfield. It doesn't really have a name. It just says Smash Weekly. <laughs> um, Down Throw at Hampton uh, is coming up um, Saturday, April 30th in Fresno. And then uh, Senkal Clash 9, uh, Sunday, May 1st at 10 a.m. Um, yeah. For anyone who, who loves our homie Cav here, um, we have 2CC, the Midgar Saga, coming up with a $300 pop bonus on May 17th at 4.30 p.m. Big retirement. <laughs> Um, and then uh, Senkal Civil War, the big one, on uh, Saturday, May 21st at 11, 11 a.m. Now, now you can see why we're such a stacked region. We, we yeah, have so yeah. many tournaments going on. 
Yeah, we have a we have a bunch of tournaments, and they're all like so spread out too. And we're honestly, I think now after Genesis, I feel like the fire that's been lit, it's gonna cause even more tournaments to pop up. There's a tournament over in Manteca. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a newer one. It just started. They had their first event. I want to say just a few weeks ago. It was uh for melee, and from what I know, they've run ultimate before at that same venue, and Ooh. so I could definitely see them starting to do melee and ultimate eventually what what days is it on um I, it was on a saturday last oh week. my god that's perfect oh yeah i'll uh, uh we'll, we'll have to see though man he is seeing some burn bolt and melee on saturday yeah. <laughs> I if, any, if anyone wants to uh raid a tournament with me tomorrow it looks like there's a tournament at um 8 30. It's kind of late, eight thirty p.m. It's in Sunnyvale. I might, I might go to it. If I had cash to like drop on gas, I would say swoop me. But I, I am a broke boy. I'm still thinking about it. What time? I don't even know what time I work. Oh yeah, never mind. Never mind. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, nope, nope. Oh, never mind. Never mind. We'll find another nope. one. We'll find another one to go to because I'm, I'm trying to go to every local now. Uh, they do game times on Wednesdays. I think. What is it? The uh, tournament in San Jose. Yeah, Guildhouse. Guild House. Oh, Guildhouse, maybe. Guildhouse. It's a pretty big one. I'm pretty sure yeah. some of the French guys are going. Um, no, I've never <laughs> been to a Guildhouse. <laughs> oh, the French guys are still here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I don't know, Everyone's... They, went to, uh, they went to AFK Arena yesterday. Well, so that's what a lot of them do. A lot of times when people come in from out of state or out of country, from what I know, they like to stay a little bit longer, mm-hmm. at least the higher level players, and they like to go to uh, locals in the area of that major. You can just set up a black curtain. Just... Oh, yeah. They got money, though. <laughs> yeah, they do have money. The void. Mm-hmm. The black curtain, the void, man. Soon enough, we got to get a St. Cal major going. Yo, man. That would be the dream. Can we talk about how many good players we have in some players? Like, I don't think there are very few people who are like freaking. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, damn near everybody is like pretty good at the game. Yeah. And Cal's, everybody's been counting. Saint Cal's on it. Reaper region people. People. Oh, people we're gonna are, get better. We're Most only definitely. gonna get better. You hear that, Teb? We're coming for you. <laughs> Man, we're coming, bro. We on the way. Pulling up in the van like Final Fantasy. All right. Well then, uh, <laughs> I think that's a good note to end it on. <laughs> Sin Cal's coming for everybody. Sin Cal versus the world. France. <laughs> North Cal, SoCal, anybody. I'm ready for the Sin Cal SoCal group battle. <laughs> Yo, God. wait, dude. Sam Cal Tri State. I talked in a cat and I was like, hey, bro, low key? Mm-hmm. Low key? I, I don't know, man. I don't know what Tri State can handle it. And he was like, bro, you're bugging. Maybe, but like, we kind of cracked. Basically, I was just chilling, Sam Cal in a cat so he pays attention to us. Well, I, mean, I was like, I don't know, man. We got good pussy. I don't know if you ever want to set that up. The cat's going to well, chill up to the next uh, Central Coliseum. See you, bro. We're all gonna get our money taken by Nakat. Nah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wipe the floor at them, bro. No facts. Someone could definitely beat Nakat. Nakat ain't good. Nakat ain't shit. It's my, hey, got, hey, hold on, hold on. We got this. No, I don't know about that. No, 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 no. All the pros, all the pros, come out, come out to the center. Come through. See what's going on. See what's happening. We had the MG, tweet. We had oh, the MWG it. podcast. Do not uh, support that. <laughs> <laughs> we love all the top players. We're not talking too much shit. Why, <laughs> bro? Nah, stop going all the smoke. Slide. <laughs> pull up, Zen. You pull up. Yeah, Zen. You. You won't fight Zeke again. You scared? You won't do it. <laughs> we just we just got some problems with Zeke, bro. No, I know. Watch the podcast like pops off after this video. No, everyone's, everyone's like, oh my god. He's gonna, <laughs> these guys are talking trash about us. We gotta pull up. This is gonna be Man, the promo. Farm us. <laughs> yeah, we're in droves. We got Saint, we got a uh, SoCal and France all come into our tournament. Yo, could you imagine France in, in the Basque venue, bro? <laughs> That'd be crazy. Down barrier breaking like 
cheer. <laughs> Guto, Guto, man, yeah, that's that woof, word. Woof, woof, woof. Man, Wario was cool. I gotta admit, I'm a Gluto fan, so true. I mean, it's crack. Woof, too. Oh, wait, y'all face Spargo. Oh, yeah, that's true. Face Spargo, face Spargo. I won't lie, his uh, little trailer in the phase was kind of cringy. But good for him. Good for him. Bro, he threw up the gang signs. I was like, oh, oh, he with it. Okay, <laughs> uh, well, just, just, Okay, so I is it just me or has Spargo never shown uh, an inch of emotion in his life? I have never seen that man smile. I love Spargo. Like I, I like honestly, like I wanted him to win Genesis so bad. But it's just like, yeah. when is he ever gonna smile? I think I I honestly thought Light would take it because that man is like something different. Like he is catching up to. I think he's like not a top five player. He's he's definitely a top ten player like right now, and he has been for like a minute. That man is too good. Yeah. Hello, moist players. Hmm? The moist crew. The moist crew. <laughs> the moist crew. Moist it started. Moist was it moist cola? Uh yeah, moist cola, moist light, and then the goblin too, right? Goblin, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that two more weeks? Goblin needs no huh? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well before we get too wild, uh we're gonna call it right here. <laughs> Thank you uh for tuning in to episode forty nine. This has been a treat. We got to talk with Foodie Corn, Meryl, and Cav and see just what it's like to be at a super major. And the energy, the Smash community coming from all over the world and every crew just representing uh, their own love for the game. But Sincal has the most love for the game. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we, have more, we have more positivity for our players than you ever will. We are more better. Simply get good. Facts. <laughs> True. On job. Um, all right. Well. We'll catch you guys next week for episode 50. We'll probably think of something special to do. Man. Maybe we have something planned already, but who knows? Ooh, mystery. 